Hi, I'm Judy Blair, and I'm an anti-racism consultant specializing in working with white folks. I'm also a member of the team at Diverse City, and I'm excited to bring you this video series. In this series, we're looking at 15 different aspects of white supremacy culture. Now, when I say the words white supremacy in this context, I'm not talking about white supremacists. I'm not talking about proud boys or white nationalists. I am talking about white supremacy as an idea or a concept that elevates whiteness, that makes it the ideal, the assumed, the default in our culture. The 15 aspects that we're discussing in this video series come from a list published in 1999 by Tama Okun, an anti-racist trainer and activist. The list itself is a culmination of work by multiple people, including Tema, as well as Kenneth Jones, Daniel Buford, James Williams, Sharon Martinez, and others. Over the past two decades, the list has served as a useful framework for recognizing, disrupting, and dismantling white supremacy in our day-to-day -day lives. I want to be really clear here. The values and norms this video series is addressing are not exclusive to Western white culture and they're not inherently bad or good. They are merely often invisible ways of being that are part of our socialization. If we want to create a more just and equitable world, we have to interrogate these values when we notice them coming up, checking to see if an alternate way of being might provide better, more equitable results. A word of caution, these norms should not be taken as a checklist of behaviors to eliminate with the alternatives enshrined as the cure for all that ails us. Critical analysis and weighing of these norms when they crop up is vital. There is no shortcut to uprooting white supremacy. Each video in this series focuses on one aspect from the list, and today's aspect is quantity over quality. So many of us have heard the term quality time, right? That's the idea that if we spend time that is of high quality with loved ones, that's maybe better than spending more time with them. If that other more time is of lower quality. Quantity over quality values more, right? That may be more clients served, more burgers served. Uh, it could be more widgets sold. It could be more friends following you on TikTok. It could be all sorts of things. But when we value quantity over quality, sometimes as with that phrase, quality time, we're missing out on stuff. We're not able to make room for high quality. If we are just concentrating on serving more burgers, are we also concentrating on serving really good burgers? Not always. So thinking about what we're valuing in the moment and really weighing whether that is what we want to value is really important. So the next time you're in a conversation and you maybe notice quantity being thrown around is like the, the be all end all of things, pause for a moment and ask, is there a way that we can actually make sure that the quality of what we're doing is high as well as the quantity? Do we need to trade off quantity for quality? Or do we need to do it the way that we're doing it because that's the way we need to do it? Who knows? But you won't know unless you ask the question. So ask it. Learn me, I'll learn you. Diversity, teach me, I teach